I recently posted eight short form videos showing my track record. There are lots of people on social media saying they are an investing expert, et cetera. So I believe this is an easy way to help you differentiate between the contenders and the pretenders. So here are the eight track record videos, one after the other. Why you should listen to me over other investing channels. Part one, on October 19th, 2021, the Bitcoin ETF BITO launched. It was the largest ETF launch of all time as it topped 1 billion of assets in just two days, faster than any other ETF ever. So the average person was probably thinking, wow, everyone's buying this, so it's probably a good investment. Well, on December 2nd, 2021, just two months later, I published a video and said, and whether Bitcoin goes up or whether it goes down or whether it's stagnant, you're very likely to do worse than actually just owning Bitcoin. Since the day I published that video, Bitcoin itself is down 44% and the ETF BITO is down 51%. So the ETF has done about 7% worse than Bitcoin itself. If you wanna look at the results since day one of the ETF launch, Bitcoin itself is down 54% and the ETF BITO is down 58%. Follow me for more investing insight, not financial advice. Why you should listen to me over other investing channels, part two. On July 22nd, 2022, I published a video discussing the long-term potential of industrials. And I mentioned a specific ETF that I bought. So to invest in these companies, I've started with a small position in iShares Global Industrials ETF with the ticker symbol EXI. Since that day, July 22nd, 2022, the S&P 500 is up around 3%, and EXI is up around 15%. Follow me for more investing insight, not financial advice. My track record, part three. On October 20th, 2022, I noticed a promising opportunity in the market. I think we could be amidst another epic dislocation now, but this time you're watching Fundamentals of Finance, so you're not gonna miss it. Well, as of the end of September, 2022, Apple stock was supposedly worth more than the entire FTSE 100, which is the 100 largest stocks listed on the London Stock Exchange. These include some of the world leaders in energy, healthcare, consumer goods, and many other areas. This could be a good time to revisit your geographic diversification and make sure you've got enough international. And since that day, October 20th, 2022, the S&P 500 is up around 10%, and the IFA, which is like the S&P 500 for international stocks, is up around 27%. Follow me for more investing insight, not financial advice. My track record? Part four, at the end of 2022, all the experts on social media were predicting a housing crash in 2023. This is why the 2023 housing crash is gonna be bad. So on December 5th, 2022, I published a video on YouTube that is my most hated video with the 70% like to dislike ratio. In that video, I said, but in short, I do think house prices will fall, just not in blades of glory crash fashion like a lot of YouTubers would have you believe. On April 25th, 2023, the S&P Case-Shiller Home Prices Indices updated their data for 2023. And you can see since January, home prices have actually gone up slightly and are just slightly down since December, right in line with what I said. Follow me for more investing insight, not financial advice. My track record, part five. On December 26, 2022, I made a video saying, the number one way people can tell you're a rookie when it comes to investing is when you quote the Dow. Basically, no professional investor pays attention to it. On February 3rd, 2023, about five weeks later, Yahoo Finance put out an article saying why you should stop caring about the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Follow me for more investment insight, not financial advice. My track record, part six. On June 16th, 2022, I made a video talking about Russia trying to destroy Ukraine's economy by taking out fertilizer. Russia is trying to destroy Ukraine's economy. So they've targeted grain elevators and fertilizer plants to destroy Ukrainian infrastructure. On February 19th, 2023, eight months later, Bloomberg came out with an article that said, Russia's war in Ukraine has highlighted deep concerns about an essential ingredient in global food security, fertilizers. Follow me for more investment insight, not financial advice. My track record, part seven. On March 22nd, 2023, I made a video and said, There is an interesting silver lining though. The banking crisis is likely to make banks more careful about who they lend to. And the tightening of credit has the same effect on the economy as Fed rate increases. It weakens the economy, which lowers inflation, meaning the Fed doesn't have to raise rates as much. On April 16th, 2023, almost a month later, CNBC came out with an article saying, Yellen says US banks may tighten lending and negate need for more Fed rate hikes. Almost exactly what I said almost a month before. Follow me for more investment insight, not financial advice. My track record, part eight. After Silicon Valley Bank failed, a ton of videos came out talking about how they didn't manage their bond portfolio well. 
But from what I can see, no one talked about how Goldman Sachs gave them bad advice. On March 28th, I published a long form video called Silicon Valley Bank, the complete story and said, and some bad advice from Goldman Sachs made the problem worse. Trying to sell the bonds and raise the capital at the same time was a critical error. And that part was Goldman Sachs fault. Then on May 4th, five weeks after I posted my video, the Wall Street Journal came out and said, Goldman's role in SVB capital raise probed by regulators. Goldman Sachs role in Silicon Valley Bank's last days has come under US government scrutiny. When it comes to who you should listen to, I hope my track record videos help you differentiate between the contenders and the pretenders.